I think for children, education just in a classroom doesn't really mean nearly as much as education out in the real world. And I feel like my daughters learned so much from the traveling experiences. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, let's go see the world. Hey everyone, it's Laura from a Midlife Traveler Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We have a new episode in our Women Travel series where we are discovering and sharing the travel stories, experiences, and advice from women who travel. The first episode that we had in this series featured Rachel of racheltravels.com. And today we have kind of a, a bonus episode in that you get to hear and discover two women travelers and hear their travel stories. So who you are going to hear from today is Cindy Lowe from One Perfect Day in Travel. And Cindy is a guidebook writer, a travel blogger, and travel podcaster who is also a friend of mine. And this is Cindy interviewing me for one of her podcast episodes where we end up talking about what travel means in our lives as women who have had careers and had to find ways to fit in travel around vacation time. We talk about what travel has meant to our families, and we share some of our favorite family travel experience stories in addition to um, the end where we talk about some things we'd like to do next, such as revisiting a place we've been to before, but experiencing it in a whole new way. So for the first question, how do you make time for travel and in your busy life? I am so thrilled to be sitting here with you live having this conversation. I love traveling and world exploration, and I love chatting with other women who also love travel and world exploration. So very excited. So how do I make time and find the money? Um, it's hard. Yeah. It's not easy for me. So I have a full-time career. I have a house. I've got dogs. I've got a family. I have all these responsibilities, but I very much value experiences over things. And my family made a commitment years ago when my son was a teenager to value more shared experiences over things. And it's, driving an older car. It's not having, not constantly shopping for the newest fashion and clothing. It's, it's saving my money so that I can value it for travel. And I think that's so important. And I think one of the things that Laura and I have found that we have in common is that we do uh, value experience so much, especially when those experiences involve travel. And I know um, you have a son who is, um, I think, out of high school now. And I have daughters that are millennials, I call them. And several of you that might be listening have heard from my daughter, Millennial Mel, who I (laughs) travel to Europe with (laughs) Sometimes and millennial Mel loves to chat on the podcast when she can. But um, as we have done that, and as I've looked back over the years, I know one of the things that I've really been um, thankful that I gave up some things to have some experiences for is the experience that I've been able to share with my daughters as they were growing up. How about how has that been for you and your family? You know, I I paused before I answered because I just got goosebumps when I I thought about that because it actually has been probably one of the absolute best things for my family ever. Um, When we made this commitment to value experiences over things, it wasn't easy. It was a time when, oh, we need the new Xbox, the new Xbox games. And my son was a teenager. And um, to say, no, we're not going to do those, but we're going to go to China. That didn't go over very big, Uh right, until we got to China. And... 
I didn't grow up with travel. I discovered travel in college when I put myself through a foreign study, and it gave me a new sense of world and identity and compassion and empathy for others, and it lit me up inside. And what I saw on my son's trip to China was that same lit, lighting him up inside. And it changes your dynamic when you travel. I mean, Cindy, I bet this changed your dynamic with your daughters, yes. too, when you travel, that it's not the mom, dad, do this, uh, what are your grades, what do you do today, can you do the dishes? Instead, it's, oh, look at this, oh, look at that, oh, look at this funky thing on the menu. The conversation changes, and everyone's in it together in a partnership in a way that you don't get in everyday life in your home. That's so true. And I think as an educator, um, I've been, those of you that have listened before know that I've been a teacher, a principal, and a school superintendent. I think for children, education just in a classroom doesn't really mean nearly as much as education out in the real world. And I feel like my daughters learned so much from the traveling experience as well. Well, absolutely, because when you're in a classroom, many times, you know, you don't have a choice in the curriculum, you're, or you're learning what the teacher is, is giving you. When you're on vacation, it's spontaneous. You learn something because you're interested, right? You want to go see that. Exactly. And so much of that learning goes beyond just the place and the geography and the history of it, even though that's so important, but those intangibles that you learn about the rest of the world. And I think it just helps you appreciate um the the rest of the world, and it also helps you appreciate coming home. So can I turn the tables and ask you a question? Sure. So I'm curious, so on family vacation, so what are a couple of locations that maybe you traveled to with your daughters when they were younger, like two or three locations that were just really cool experiences for you guys as a family? One place that was really special to us was um, visiting New Schwanstein Castle outside of Munich. Um, I'm a Disney lover, as many people know, <laughs> and seeing that castle where Walt Disney was inspired to um, then construct all of his castles, starting with the Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland, and being there and going in it and realizing the history of that was really special. And and I guess I'll stick with that theme and say Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. Oh, I've not been there Yes, yet. it's beautiful. And that also inspired Walt Disney to develop his first theme park, Disneyland. So he visited with his daughters. He had two daughters, like I do. And when they were very young, he said, you know, Tivoli is so beautiful and it has um, flowers and places, a lake and places to walk around as well as all the rides. And in the United States, we only had basically um, traveling carnivals and he wanted somewhere beautiful with rides where he could take his daughters and have entertainment, so he wow. built it. So taking my daughters there and visiting Copenhagen and, and seeing Tivoli Gardens, that was special. And I guess because they like Disney because their mom likes Disney, <laughs> they enjoyed it too. What a great story. I had no idea. So I've been to New Schwastein before when I was backpacking, but I've never been to Tivoli. That's... It, it was fun, and I will say this. We went to New Schwanstein when the girls were young. Oh, it was so cold. We went in winter, and it was beautiful. But this year, I went back in summer, and I would definitely recommend you go back in summer. So that brings me to my next question, which is, um, I know that both of us have had the pleasure to travel a good bit, and one of the places I wanted to return to, which I had the opportunity to do, was to go back to New Schwanstein in the summertime, and I did that. Um, and I would definitely recommend it, and you can read all about it in my Munich book because I have Bavarian day trips in there. But thinking about where would be somewhere that you've been that you would like to maybe return to? That is a good question and one that's really hard for me because it kind of depends on what I want to do. If I want to go have an active adventure, do I just want to relax and be off the grid? What do I want to do? And uh, I will say that, so I did a foreign study and lived in Italy. So Italy for me is, is in my heart and in my soul and it will always be a go-to place that I could go and be off the grid. But I've been there so many times that it's not always fresh and new for me. One place that I 
definitely want to return to that I only got to see glimpses. I just mm-hmm. got a taste, not enough, yeah. was uh, Chile. Oh. So uh, another family vacation. Uh, my family were skiers, and that's also another experience that we enjoy doing together. Yes. One year, we made the commitment. We had that bucket list. We chased winter. And so we flew down to South America and skied in the Andes Mountains in Chile uh, in August. Yes. And it was just so beautiful. Uh, Also, Chile, out of Santiago, uh, is one of the airports that fly into Easter Island, which Uh is the world's most remote inhabited island with all the Rapa Nui, the heads. Uh So we did that. And, but I was in central Chile and Chile is an incredibly long, tall state. So that, pardon me, country, the top is desert and the bottom you're down at the Antarctic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, they have every single climate and we were in the middle, uh, in the Santiago area and went skiing in the Andes, but I really want to go to Antarctica and I want to go down South to Patagonia because Every single photo I've seen of Patagonia looks amazing. Every single blog post I read sounds like something I want to do, except for the ones where you're like really working too hard because I'm not quite fit for that anymore, <laughs> like hiking for days. But I want to go see that. I want to go stand in Patagonia. I want to have the opportunity to go down and see where penguins live in their natural habitat and maybe go to Antarctica. That sounds great. And that kind of leads into what I wanted to talk about next. And this is kind of what I find. When I want to return to a place, I want to return to it maybe in a different way, in a different season. And I always want to try and add one more thing nearby that I haven't seen before. So I'm getting to return to somewhere wonderful, like maybe Italy, where I'm going back in um, May this year. But this year, for the first time ever, I can't believe I haven't been there, I'm going to the Cinque Terre. So um, we're going back to Rome, of course, and but this time I'm going to explore in depth a little bit more of the Christian sites, and my plan is to write a Christian's Guide to Rome. For example, when you go to um, the Vatican, when you go to the Colosseum, certainly you want to see the typical things, but what are the things, for example, in the Colosseum, there is a large cross that has been erected in the middle of the Colosseum in honor of all the Christians that were thrown to the lions there. So I want to make sure I see that on my next tour of the Colosseum. And of course, going to Cinque Terre as part of that trip will make it extra special to me. So um, thinking about your personal podcast, A Midlife Traveler, what do you convey through your podcast that makes it unique and special that you would want to share with my listeners? Because I think a lot of them would be interested in tuning in and and checking out a midlife traveler. Oh, well, thank you for the compliment. I also, I love your podcast too. So for uh, Cindy's listeners, I mean, Cindy is a walking tour guide. I mean, you can, I, you can spend 10 minutes in conversation with her and, and plan your whole trip. I mean, if you bought her books, you, you get it. She's a tour guide. I'm not that organized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of but always, I, I, yeah. I, I I do plan parts of my trip, but a lot of my trips are very spontaneous and what I decide to go see and do. And so my podcast is really more for someone who's curious about discovering a place, a bit more on the culture. So a midlife traveler could be taken as either a midlife, you're just in the midst of life, being present and seeing and experiencing what's around you, or maybe you're like my vintage and you're in your midlife. Either way, we could all use a dose of travel. And so my podcast is different. It's like 10, 15 minutes of short stories. And these short stories are told in the voices, the opinions, and the minds of locals who live in a place or travelers who've been to a place. So I have um, a series on Scotland where you learn about Scotland from a Scotsman named James. And when we met in Ireland in Killarney, I was traveling around for two weeks by myself. And I just People I thought were interesting, stuff I thought was nice, I stopped and just talked and recorded episodes. So it's more of a dose of culture and stories. And what you as a listener might get is if you just showed up in Ireland and walked down the street, you might run into a person like this or a story like that if you're just open to it. And so it's sort of a taste of the people 
people that you meet when you walk down the street. Is that Sesame Street? <laughs> I love it. And I've really enjoyed listening to it, too, because it really does give you a flair for the people, the places that you have seen. And um, it's it's a great introduction. And it's a great way of going deeper into the culture of the people who live there, work there, or who have, like us, have, have traveled there and have really enjoyed it. So thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode. And I do highly encourage you to go online and Google Cindy Lowe. Her last name is L-O-E. If you're interested in checking out any of her guidebooks currently on Amazon. Plus, she also has a very interesting travel blog at oneperfectdayin.org and also a travel podcast called One Perfect Day in Travel. So thanks for listening.